Can everyone see my screen now? Yes. yes. All right. So I want to talk today about a project that I have been working on and three other colleagues here at Morehouse. And I thank you for taking the time to listen and to um, allow me a chance to show you what the future of education actually looks like and to share my excitement with you. So I'm gonna talk about virtual reality in STEM and how you need to really start to visualize the future of education. Um, and so me and Dr. Vereen actually put this presentation together so that we can show you some of the work that we had done and just talk to you a little bit about VR and how it's being used, but he's in lab right now, so he couldn't get away to, to help present. So for some of you, you may know, or you may have heard about what VR actually is, or virtual reality. Um, I'm sure some of you all have used augmented reality in your STEM courses before. If you've used Lapster, then you have, but it lets the user experience the real world, which has been digitally augmented or enhanced in some way. And usually students are able to manipulate three-dimensional objects in space from a computer interface or even on their phone. Virtual reality, on the other hand, actually takes the user from that real world experience and place them in a completely simulated one. So our students are actually completely submerged in this particular environment. So you're actually immersed in an environment that is completely simulated and it shuts the physical world out completely. So in immersive VR, the user becomes fully immersed in this artificial three-dimensional world that is completely generated by a computer. Um, we are using the Oculus Quest 2 that is created by Facebook. So if you can see my screen, I don't know if some of you all can see me, but if you can, you'll see me uh, showing you the headset as well. So the headset, the Oculus Quest 2 here fits very nicely on the head of students. I'm not going to put it actually on my head, but it does have a uh, certain um, comfort uh, kind of tabs and things on it that you can adjust it so that it can fit comfortably on your head. You can adjust the eyes as well. Um, but it also comes with two joysticks that are your hands when you are in VR. So two joysticks that are right and left, um, if you all can see, see that. And so you have to kind of be careful about how you use them because the way that your hands look in VR is actually how your hands look um, to, to other people in VR. But it's very neat because when you touch another user's hand and you're in the same space in virtual reality, they actually um, can feel it. So the joystick will vibrate. But there's a motion tracker that actually continues to measure the position and orientation that you're in, and it allows the image to continue to adjust the scene representative to what you're viewing. So if you turn your head, then in the, in the headset you actually, or in the scene that you're in, you actually can turn your head. One of the things I like about the Oculus Quest 2 and the platform that we're using is you can use it seated, so you can do a seated simulated mode, or you can use it if you create boundaries in your particular space and if you wanna actually be walking around and have your full body immersed in, and actually be moving through the scene, you can also do that and it'll create boundaries for you so that it'll, it'll generate a screen that like if you are bounding into a boundary in your actual physical location too. So this is um, the campus that Victory XR built. So they built a digital twin of Morehouse's campus so that students enter the VR world, the first thing they really experience is the college's quad. And I remember when we first came um, for our orientation and students were able to see Century Campus. I mean, I could feel the emotion of the students when they actually got on campus. I know how I felt because I didn't realize how much I missed Mother Morehouse until I got in that headset and they showed us the first preview of the campus. And it looks exactly like Century Campus, all the way to the gratings in front of um, neighbor McVeigh and the, the shadowing of the building, you can actually see it. And so students were in awe of 
the 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 simulated campus that they 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 built out. So you can see all of the buildings around Century Campus, even all the way to Clark Atlanta. And so it is just a beautiful situation to see students just kind of perk up, um, especially during COVID and we hadn't been on campus. So students were really, really touched by this. And that is why I really, really wanted to do it for my senior students in my advanced in organic chemistry course. So currently Morehouse is teaching three classes in VR using the Victory XR platform, which is based on something called Engage. It's an Engage platform where you can load your lessons and lo load the actual uh, generated world. But they have lots of different locations that are already built in and they built special ones in for us for our courses. So we have support from Qualcomm that provided an Oculus Quest 2 that I just showed you to all students. And so it was delivered to their homes. It utilizes the Qualcomm's XR2 chipset, as does every other mobile VR headset right now, except for um, something called Magic Leap. And in this headset, students can meet on a virtual Morehouse campus or any other location we've met in space. So you'll see some pictures with that. Um, you can also take pictures in VR, which is really neat selfies too. So, uh, and actually the shadowing and the lighting changes based on where you are and your positioning too. And so it is, it's really a neat experience. You can see the entire body of everyone. Like you can see in this photo here, you can see everyone's body. Um, that's me in the middle. I didn't yet have face enabling um, activated and I'll show you what that looks like um, on the next few slides. But the first three classes that were taught this semester and piloted are Biology 105, which is men's health. History 112, which is world history um, by Dr. Hamilton. So Ethel Vereen, Dr. Vereen teaches biology 105, the men's health, I'm teaching the advanced in organic chemistry 421. Um, in the fall, though, Blacks in Wonderland, which is a FYE English course is actually in development to be taught on VR campus. And I'm going to be building out my analytical chemistry 211 course as well in VR. So I wanna show you this video. I tried to do it from the PowerPoint, but, um, but it, it, it wasn't really working very well. So I'm gonna go out of the PowerPoint as I already have it queued. Um, and just show you, we did a virtual tour with press and this is the video of my classroom. So they did a, a lesson on atomic structure and they were able to build molecules based on the, um, the name of the molecule and to talk about the molecular geometry. But this is what my students did. And that's me as a professor. And, if you find and this it, is Dr. Vereen's course in which they were doing nutrition point. exercises where they had to work in the kitchen and fix their plates. This is another landscape that was built uh, for world and history. So war, war is you can also and so the uh, show the video escalated. and put screens up in the on this campus. So here's a screen that I have up in my classroom. Students are walking around. This is a labyrinth activity where students can go and answer questions. And it's really, really neat because it has some really crazy things that happen to students if they get it wrong uh, and they have to start all over from the beginning and they get kind of lost sometimes. This is them doing portion control. And when we were putting together our molecules so that they can get a feel for how to put together, we were actually in space. So we didn't have to worry about spacing. Students could build the molecules as large or as small as possible. The campaign was already beginning to expose serious flaws in Napoleon's plan. You can put any video up. Once again, they built this industrial kitchen so that they could talk about nutrition and men's health. Some sperms get and then this is what my students really love, the virtual field trips where you can actually go inside of the human body in some of them or explore different spaces. Students liken it to that of the magic school bus. First, let's understand the basics of uh, augmented reality. Let me get out of that. Y'all still with me? Am I still with you? Yes. Awesome. Okay. Yes. Thank you. So these are some still pictures from my actual course. So if you look um, here, if 
I don't know. Let me see if I can get my laser pointer going so you can actually see this dot. Okay, great. So here, if you look, you can see the controls. So when they do the orientation for the students and they have a really good team at Victory XR that works with you and like takes you through step-by-step step from every lesson, they build out spreadsheets and you put all of your images in that you may need, any scenes that you might want to generate, all of that stuff, they work really hands-on with you. They also do the orientation for the students so that they can get used to working in VR and moving around in that particular space. Um, and they have these this this uh, generated 3D kind of like control that'll help them as they are learning how to maneuver in three dimensional space in this VR headset. So it's really really neat. They do all of that that part, the orientation, and they sit in on classes with you to help you navigate, help you record, help you facilitate when stu if students are having trouble um, accessing or moving objects and grasping objects in 3D. I mean, in in VR, then they they're able to help with that. So these are my students just working in groups. And one of the things that I really like about them being able to work in groups is they have something called 3D voice. And 3D voice is where students can talk to one another in a certain, like you can set it where it, if they're close to one another, then they can only hear one another. And they, but then everyone can hear me if I, if I cue it for everyone to be able to hear me, even if they're in their own individual groups. So no matter where I am in the room, they can hear me, but they won't hear each other's individual conversations. They also have, um, like I built out this, this lab when we talked about assets and bases and we were talking about the gastrointestinal system. So we did this entire problem-based, this case study about uh, the, the guy's name was Gertie's Dilemma. He had GERD, and, uh, which is gastrointestinal uh, esophageal reflux disorder. So anyway, he had acid reflux basically. And so they had to determine which antacid would be the, would be the best to help solve his problem. Um, but we talked about um, various things that could cause it, but then in advanced and organic chemistry, metals in the bases actually, um, they, they had to talk about that and the metallic component, which metal works best, was it, was it calcium, which mineral works best. So it was, it was a really neat exercise and they got to go through um, the digestive track um, and, and pull it, pull all these objects and, and, and really like go through the intestinal system. So they really, really liked that. They felt like I said they were on the magic school bus. Um, but you're also able to pull up screens in any kind of way that you want to. So I've created a YouTube channel that has videos on it that students can access and I put them on Blackboard as well. But um, they, if you have a YouTube video, you can show it within VR. Now these videos are short, so we're not sitting in our headset just watching video because we could do that on Zoom too. But it also helps to engage them and give them direction. And then I can pause the screen and they can see what, what their next steps are too. Um, this is Dr. Uh, Vereen's course, the men's health course, and he built all this out. And one of the things we talked about doing was trying to make sure that they had culturally relevant content um, so if you go to most of the field trips, the people don't really look like us. Um, and we wanted to make sure that our students felt like they were at HBCU still, that they still had uh, lessons and things that actually felt like them, that were culturally responsive um, and, and supported our mission, right? So if they'll... Uh, created this welcome back slide and video for it for them that had him in VR with the Morehouse Tiger. Um, inside of his barbershop model, he has the support Black business, uh, Black colleges and universities, uh, posters on the wall. Bob Marley is on one of the walls. Um, but his barbershop model, community model, he was able to, to use for discussions um, for them to talk about health issues in a barbershop, in an actual barbershop. So he had them design this and he built it out and had lead on how it looked. Um, and this is his students going through the reproductive system as sperm. So um, that's, that's a part of what his FYE course in men's health looks like in VR. And so the reason why I really wanted to present this to all of you was 
kind of as a call to action. So Steve Grubbs, who is the founder and CEO of Victory XR, basically stated that this partnership gives the academic world a glimpse into the future of education and that these classes will be surprisingly close to those imagined in the book Ready Player One. And um, one of the things that we really want for you all to grasp is that you can do this too. It doesn't take um, for you to be a gamer. It doesn't take for you to be someone who wants to be. It's really user-friendly. It was a heavy lift because we did it in a short span of time. But if you have the summer um, available and you really want to do something different for your students, you want to really immerse them in an environment that will give them uh, an ability to also co-create um, in that space, then I, I suggest that you do it. Um, so Deshante Carmen is the project manager and uh, you can also contact me or Dr. Vereen. And then I would like to acknowledge my colleagues who we've done some cross-disciplinary work. Dr. Tanya Clark spoke in my class on Monday. We were talking about uh, Henrietta Lacks, so the immortal uh, life of Henrietta Lacks. And my students did some reading in literature. And she came in as a guest speaker to talk to them about it because we're talking about metals in medicine. And so we were talking about the way that the radium treatments were used and how they failed during that time and how they actually caused cancer and then other metals that are used in medicine as a part of my advanced in organic chemistry um, curriculum. And so students really, really were engaged in that. And then to see another colleague in the classroom with them, they were really excited for that. Deshante Carmen, like I said, he's the project manager, Dr. Ethel Vereen, who is phenomenal in this space um, with students. And, that, and he did it with his entire class. I only piloted four modules. He did the entire course week to week to week in VR. And then Dr. Ovell Hamilton, who, did, who was doing world history, uh, this is myself. And then um, Southern Company, who provided the funding. So we received a grant um, to fund this, where students have, there's 130 headsets that we have available for students to um, use. And Qualcomm, who um, also donated some money and sent the Oculus Quest 2s out and had them in, on the students' door set up. So we appreciate them. Victory XR, who provides the engaged platform. And then, um, like I said, my colleagues who I work with. So thank you so much for listening. Um, there's some PR and some press that also went out and I'll send those links to you. I'm not going to continue to go through them, but I'd like to entertain any questions that you might have. freeze? No, did I freeze? I did? Okay. Ugh. Any questions, colleagues? Let me try to save some bandwidth. I was just going to say, you know, I really like this and it's really futuristic and I could think of in, in my class, in two of my classes, I'm behaving sensation perception, how this could really take them to another level. Yes, it does. Um, honestly, there was a study that was done in 2013 where they had She went out again. Dr. Morris? technological tool. Oh, did I go out? Yes. Again? Yeah. My connection is not liking right now. It's it's, it's tired of the, the meeting. I... <laughs> Any other questions, colleagues? Typically, how long does a build-out take? Do you have to start with the build-out and then with just add in your additional content. So when you say build out, that's putting everything together, Sheena. She can't hear you. I hear you now. I hear you now, it's back, I'm sorry. Yeah, you were saying about a build out. 
how long does a build out? What is, could you just give me an idea, impression about when you say build out, what that really encompasses? So my lift was heavier than everyone else's. And that's why I did three. Well, I've done three. I have a fourth module that I'm doing. But um, you, for chemistry, they don't have that much content. In your area of uh, kinesiology, they have a lot of human anatomy. I'll just talk to her on the back end because she, she's going out. So I'll get that understanding at a later time. Okay, colleagues, uh, any questions about VR, just please email uh, Dr. Morris and Dr. Uh, Ethel Vereen. Um, yes, just reach out to me and I'll explain a little bit more in detail. My connection is really acting up, y'all, and I do apologize, but it's technology. <laughs> thank you for your presentation. Thank you. Thank you all for having me. I appreciate everyone. And y'all be safe. Take care. Colleagues, um, I hope everybody is safe. I hope you please review the important dates and please uh, send me your, uh, your narratives, your final drafts about your goals for teaching, scholarship, and service if you hadn't had a chance. Um, also, yesterday you saw uh, the president's email about uh, vaccination. I'm sure more information is coming about that. Uh, if you have not been vaccinated and coming back to campus. But anyway, I appreciate you. I hope you finish up your semester strong. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Doc. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Bye now. Be well. Hey, Claude, I had a question. I don't I don't need the whole group to to here or not, but it was, uh, I, well, I, I know people want to go, so that's the only you. reason why. <laughs> right, okay. but I figured you might be able to answer it. Um, as for people that want to come back to campus for the summer, is there going, are we going to be hearing something about mm -hmm. what the procedure is for that or... Because um, I'm kind of hoping to get back into my lab and stuff like that. Um, well, we're probably going to get more information as uh, probably... Uh, so right it'll be forthcoming when we do the spring retreat on the, uh, okay. whatever that Tuesday is after graduation. Gotcha. We we'll probably that have more good. information. Dean Howard and Provost Brown have some more information about how we can come and go from campus. Okay. Sounds good. Sounds good. All right. Thanks. I appreciate that update. No problem. Dr. Jeff uh, Augustus Handy, can I speak to you, sir? Dr. Handy. <laughs>